freak out. Panic at the bookshelves. Welcome to the mid-year book freak out tag. Mid-year book freak out tag, right? Yes. My name's Emma, if you're new here. Thank you so much for finding your little rabbit hole way here onto my channel. And I brought a big old bag of books. Um, it's extremely heavy, but it's full of some of my best books of the year so far, some of my worst books, most disappointing, most surprising. And so I am going to be answering all the books of the mid-year book tag, which is one of my favorites to do because um, I just love like going back and looking at past years. Although I think this is technically only my second year of doing it. So anyway, I hope you enjoy. I am in my old bedroom today because um, my building is just falling to pieces around me and I cannot film there right now. So, so I hope you enjoy this cozy little room for the time being and let's just answer some questions together. We even have a special guest. Oh, we have a very special guest here today as well. All right, I think she's just gonna hang out with us Well, we go through these questions, right? All right, we have the best canine company. So the first question of this book tag is what is the best book that you've read so far this year? I feel like I can never ever pick just one of them, but I do have a few that definitely stand out in my mind. They're both five stars and they're just incredible. So War and Peace is definitely one of the best books I've read this year. This was fantastic. I read this just last month. I actually read this over two months. This was the uh, Tolstoy pick for the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club hosted by myself and Carolyn um, from Carolyn Murray Reads and we got to read this with all of you guys. It was phenomenal. Like it was actually just insanity. I think this might be the longest book I've ever read in my life but it was well worth it. This has been on kind of my bucket list of books I want to read. Um, before I die and I finally got to to do it to read it and I just feel so um, happy that I've done it but also I am so sad that it's over because like it really was a journey if you've never heard of War and Peace we follow the Napoleonic Wars we follow Tolstoy's dialogues of his characters they're so gorgeous so beautiful we follow so many different people but it's also so much Tolstoy writing history rewriting history um, kind of talking to himself about the way that history should be written. Yeah, this was honestly just insanely beautiful. I loved the philosophical discussions in here. The writing was absolutely gorgeous. Of course, I do have a few critiques in like my vlogs and wrap-ups and stuff, but on the whole, this book was utterly incredible. It so deserves the spot of best, but there is one I think that like I enjoyed just myself a little bit more than this one. I could not choose between these two for the life of me. So the second one is Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Sadawi. I think this book was just so expertly done, so cleverly done. Frankenstein in Baghdad is a retelling of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, but more than that, it takes like the mythos and the ideas the deceit, the power, all of the things that are included in Mary Shelley's text from 1818 and it plunks them down in Baghdad in Iraq, I believe in 2005. So basically we have this man named Hati and what he decides to do is create his own um, monster essentially, create his own one body out of miscellaneous body parts from innocent victims of explosions or acts of terrorism or deaths in Baghdad and his goal is to get the government to recognize them as people to get the American people who are currently in their city to see also what is happening, what they're doing, and essentially to bring about justice for these people who have no burial um, and whose souls are a little bit trapped because their body is um, not one essence anymore in death. It has become um, ripped apart and scattered across the place where it has died. So he does this, but then one morning the monster goes missing um, and from there a wave and a series of murders sweeps through the city. It was just insane. I don't want to say anything more than that. I did not have a super good idea of what this is going to be about going in other than knowing the influence from Frankenstein and it was just so much more than I had ever hoped for, so much more than I bargained for. This is an extremely smart book, one of the most powerful books I've ever read, especially being inserted with the essence of Frankenstein but then recontextualizing Frankenstein. Frankenstein into 2005 Baghdad was this playground, this environment, this landscape of ideas that were just so powerful and so commanding of your attention and I think this book just really really impacted me but incredible just highly highly recommend I cannot get enough of this book like it was just wonderful one of my favorite books of all time Evie wanted her stuffed animal but we're back so the next question is what is your favorite sequel so far in 2021 I definitely had a few but for this one I'm gonna have to go with 
uh, oh my gosh, The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, which is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. This one was fantastic. I would probably say I still enjoyed the first one more, um, but I think this one was still such a strong sequel, although it did have some questions that really never got answers, so I do need to finish up this trilogy, but I just think like what she works in with the kind of ideas of her fantasy and sci-fi that she plays around with, namely rocks, natural disasters, and everything like that. It is such a cool playground, once again. If you've never heard of this one, where you're set in a world, there are some people called Origins who can work with rocks and the earth and kind of sense when things are happening underground and all of that stuff, but this is also a place where earth experiences a season, which is utter destruction, usually through the form of earthquakes or tsunamis or the like. It's so interesting examining so social issues through geology, which is really, really cool. You guys know that I really, really love um, science, like science theory and science formulas and science, um, that world of science, not necessarily science fiction, but taking like people and then examining them through like a particular formula or something to do with math or science. And I think the broken earth just accomplishes that so much through rocks and rock formation and um, earth and the earth's processes, which is just fascinating to me. But I have to say this one was just phenomenal. Her writing, her style, her characters, the audiobooks are also really really great as well I would highly recommend so this one has to be my favorite sequel so far next question is what is your 2021 release that you're most excited about or a new release that you really want to read I have to say The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. I know everyone is talking about this right now, but I really, really want to get my little teeth into this one because I also recently read The Silent Patient. I listened to it by the same author a couple months ago. That one floored me. I think it was really good. It was also a psychological thriller type of deal infused with Greek myth and tragedy, and so is this one. This one is set at Cambridge University, so more than that, we have some dark academia things going on, and we have our protagonist, who is is accusing the handsome, mysterious Greek tragedy professor, I believe his name is Edward, of murdering, I believe, a group of girls called the Maidens. So this one is also infused with Greek myth and tragedy and stuff like that. The Silent Patient, I think, was just really cleverly done, and I've heard people are just blown away by the twists in this book, and that's something that rarely happens with me, so I think, hopefully, um, he'll be able to surprise me again in this one, and I'm just really looking forward to getting to it as well. I really love this copy so yes my most anticipated release for the second half of 2021 um in all honesty i really don't keep up with any of these but i do follow a particular author on instagram and so i know her new book is coming out very soon and that is elizabeth mcneil and her book her new book is called circus of wonders last year i read the doll factory by her which is historical fiction set in victorian london these birds are actually ridiculously loud i'm so sorry and i really really liked it so i'm very excited to see what her new book is all about too so i'll have to say circus of wonders um i really don't I don't even know of any other releases, so it's gotta be this one. Now, for most disappointing, oh man. These are definitely not the worst books I've read this year, but books I thought that maybe I was gonna like or just expected so much better from. Do you know what I mean? Like, they weren't horrible, but I'm just disappointed, which is almost so much worse. So the first book, um, this was one of the first books I read in the year, actually. That is A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. What was this? Literally, what was this? I want back the 16 hours of my life that I spent listening to this audiobook. I really should have put it down, but this is the last installment in the Shades of Magic trilogy. I thought the first book was a little bit overrated. I enjoyed the second book most of all, and so I was a little bit more inspired and pushed on to finish and get the trilogy out of the way and pick up the last book, A Conjuring of Light. Complete waste of time. One of the most underwhelming experiences of my life and I went to high school. This was honestly just brutal. I, if I'm being honest, I think this was awfully done. I would not recommend picking up the last one. I don't think it's worth it. The fan service that was delivered through the characters was completely boring, super predictable. The plot of this book was one of the most juvenile things I've ever laid my eyes on, and there's nothing wrong with that, but the way that it was executed was so lackluster, such a waste of time. This book just went around in utter circles. The plot was literally do one thing, go on an adventure to do something else, come back and finish it up. This book felt sloppy, it felt rushed, it felt like she was exhausted writing it, I was exhausted listening to it, it was just nothing good came out of this book. The scenes were way too long, the writing was trite, the pacing was all off, like I just, I just can't believe this was the conclusion to the series, like 
what a way to end things. So unfortunately, that was my little time with the series. It's now over, which thank goodness, I wish I had just stopped at book two because this was actually... I do have one more book though, and that is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This one did nothing for me. This was also extremely boring in my opinion. I've discovered that like I do not like Neil Gaiman's adult writing style at all. I find it a little bit just kind of condescending and weirdly put together. I don't like seeing how... Um, I don't like seeing Neil Gaiman in the writing, if that makes sense, and in The Ocean at the End of the Lane, like, I could see him in every single sentence that he was writing and putting down. The tone of the writing in here just felt a little bit, like, egotistical, and I don't know, I just got the weirdest vibes from this book. On top of that, I thought this book was just not very well done. Like, I can see what was being done, but I just did not enjoy it at all, unfortunately, so... That is that one. My biggest surprise, however, first of all, I think my biggest surprise of the year is that I've been getting into romance, which is a genre I've pretty much stayed away from my whole life, but now I'm slowly getting back into it. And I'm really happy because I've been finding a lot of gems. So biggest surprise of uh, the first half of the year goes to Heart of the Fae by Emma Hamm. I was not expecting to enjoy this as much as I did. Like, I love this. I love this so, so much. This is fantasy romance. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. We have Fae. We have Sorka, who is a human girl. There's a plague ravishing her small town. And so she goes off to this mythical island that's only visible, I believe, once every seven years to talk to Aemon, who is kind of the castaway prince who hides out in the castle on this island because apparently he has the cure. This was just fantastic. Um, I was not expecting, I really was not expecting great things from this, but it dazzled me, it delighted me. I read this book like a good cup of coffee and it just gave me so much happiness, so much serotonin, so much inspiration, so much comfort. It was beautiful, it was gorgeous, this book smelt like baking bread and waves crashing against the shore and seaweed and flowers and warm water on a cold night and it just was so good. I loved it, if you can't tell, this one. Um, my favorite new author that I've discovered this year, I have quite a few, but the one that sticks out to me and one that I'm very deeply interested in reading the rest of his works is Orhan Pamuk. Oh, I read Snow very early on this year as well. Absolutely loved it. Also one of my favorite reads of the year so far, but um, I really am so interested in seeing what he can do because in Snow, just like his writing, his voice, his tone, his technique, the plot, the issues that he's choosing to talk about, all of it deeply fascinates me and deeply interests me and so I cannot wait to read the rest of his works, especially My Name is Red. I really want to get to that one. I recently acquired Istanbul by Pamuk as well, which is more of a non-fiction memoir of his city, so I'm really looking forward to getting into that one as well, but this one just really, really dazzled me. I loved it. I think Pamuk is just gonna be like a really like, he is a huge writer, but someone I really want to digest the rest of his works. So, um, yeah, I'd highly recommend picking up Pamuk if you haven't tried him yet, because I got to do that this year, and I am so happy that I did. I think I want to give an honorable mention as well to Turgenev, because I read First Love last month, um, also one of my favorite books of the year so far. So impressed, like, so impressed. And this was my first time reading Turgenev, so... Yeah, between those two, I know I have a lot of good books in store for me, which I love. I trust both of them implicitly now, which is so nice to have that feeling after only reading one of their books, if a book can do that for you, so yes. The next question is, who is your newest uh, fictional crush? Um, probably gonna have to go with The Sky in War and Peace, as well as The Commas in Oliver Twist. But if you really want my heart, it's with tuxedo mask. <laughs> Moving right along to who is your favorite new character? It's Mrs. Anne Shirley. It is Mrs. Anne Shirley of Green Gables. Oh my gosh. What a character. Like when I think of the word character and like someone who is just so fleshed out, so embodied, someone who like comes off of the page, she is immediately who I think of now. Um, I read this this month and hands down, she's got to be my favorite character. Just everyone in this book, Marilla, Matthew, Diana, Gilbert, Gilbert Blythe. Yes, just everyone though, but like she just comes off of the page. She is so vibrant, so alive. I want to be her best friend. I want to be her. I want to see through her eyes. And I think to an extent this book has let me do that a little bit. I think the best character studies really do let you into how someone sees the world and 
L.M. Montgomery's writing in Anne of Green Gables and her writing of Anne of Green Gables. They are both just so expert at doing that and it's impossible not to fall in love with her as completely as those who she surrounds herself with in the actual book do as well. So Anne, 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 Anne. And with an E. Next up, we have books that have made you cry so far this year. I'm very surprised at myself because I'm not someone who easily cries at a book. I usually don't get attached to characters that easily or find myself tearing up unless it's like from exquisite writing or something. But this year, I've had a handful of books that I've bawled my eyes out to. So I'm just going to very quickly list them all. Um, this first one is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill, also one of my faves of the year so far, but um, I almost put this as one of my favorite books as well, one of the best books of the year, but this one I cried like a little baby at the end. I don't know if it was just because I was feeling very emotional that week or what, but this book like just blew it out of the water for me. This is also an extremely beautiful copy, but it just got me. It got me so much. This is a fantastic magical middle grade about a young girl who drinks the moon. We have a witch, we have a swamp monster, we have a little itty bitty dragon, and it just like tugged all of my heartstrings out of my body. If you find them, let me know where they are. I also uh, teared up once again reading Letters to a Young Poet by Rilke. This is like oh my gosh, a bajillion rereads over, but I cry every time I read this. It's just impossible not to. It just like hits me right in the chest. Um, and I did lose a few tears, a few salty tears of the oceans of my eyes to this book. So yes. If you watch my War and Peace vlogs, you'll know I bawled my heart out multiple times to this book. So those are in those vlogs because yes, I did lose it over this book more than a few times. It was just incredible. I was not expecting it, but it happened. And finally, Anne of Green Gables. I actually like shook violently to this book, um, especially the ending. It's just, yeah, it really, really got me. The emotional investment that L.M. Montgomery like pulled me into was just incredible and my heart just could not take it. So um, that's four books so far this year, which is insane because it usually doesn't happen at all. So the book that made me the happiest is hands down Sailor Moon. Um, I read volume two this month. I have no words to explain the happiness or the smiles that I get from reading this manga. Like it's just, it's nostalgic, it's funny, it's inspiring, it just gets me every single time. Right? Do you want to come talk about Sailor Moon? Yes. Oh, okay. Right on the books, why don't you? Hi. Okay. Oh. Oh, 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 you knocked all the books over. <laughs> She's back with us. But yeah, Sailor Moon has to be the happiest. Like it's just... I don't know what it is specifically, like I can't put my finger on it. I think it's just everything. Um, I love this series. Okay, she is sitting on my list of questions, but I think the next one is the most beautiful book, um, the most beautiful book cover that I've received this year and that I have on my shelf this year. The stars, uh, the stars align. The stars did some stuff today because I actually didn't have an answer to this question, um, but a book came in the mail today. It's from a mysterious who knows who because it didn't have a note with it. So if this is you, first of all, thank you because you let me answer the question to this video. And this is very, very truthfully the most beautiful cover I've seen in a long time. Wow, right? This is The Birds by Tadia Vesos. Thank you so much. This is actually stunning. Look at this detail. Um, so on my shelf at home right now, I have um, The Ice Palace, also by this author, but I've also heard The Birds is extremely well-loved. It's called the best Norwegian novel ever. Okay, don't agree with me. Thank you. Like, this is actually gorgeous. I love this color. I also love this portrait of him on the back of his cat. <laughs> um, so that is that one. If this was you, thank you so much. Like this was death to me. The last question, books that I need to read before the end of the year. There's definitely a few I want to get to. The first one um, is The Inferno, Dante's Inferno. I've picked this up, but I'm only in the introduction right now. So I cannot wait to get to this. I've been meaning to read this book for years and years and years. So 2021 is the year I want to make this happen. And then another big one, probably, is this the Next biggest book I'll be completing this year is Anna Karenina by Tolstoy. This will be a reread. Um, we're going to be reading this for July and August for the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club. 
Evie, do you have to sneeze right now? This one might be a little bit ambitious as well, but I really do want to reread 100 Years of Solitude. Um, I'd love to read this book, honestly, like every single year, but I just need to figure out like when. So those are kind of the top three, although there is lots more. I want to read more Rilke this year um, and just so many more books. I'm not really like planning anything month by month. So when it comes up, it comes up. When it happens, it, ha it happens, you know, so... Anyway, that is the mid-year freak me out book tag. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what like your best book of the year so far is or your worst. I love picking up your guys' recommendations. So many of these have been um, on your recommendations, including like Frankenstein. Um, you just sent me The Birds, so I'm guessing this is also your recommendation to me. Pamuk, and it's just thank you. Thank you for letting me find books that I love um and will basically cherish for the rest of my life so with that i'm going to sign you off and go keep evie company because she keeps pacing and looking at me like why aren't you hanging out with me so i'm gonna go see her and i'll see you guys very soon in my next video i love you so much ciao yes we're gonna hang out oh we are gonna hang out i'm done filming what do you want to do today do you want to become self-aware is that what you want to hang out with me and do I'm done filming now if you want. So I'm done filming for the day. What do you want to do? You just want to stand in the mirror? Go to another dimension? That kind of thing? Want to see tired of the people?